Let's now talk about uh, your second ranked tight end. And unfortunately, we haven't seen enough of him this season. And that's <coughs> Luke Musgrave. Uh, well, yeah. Hey, look, all power to Jonathan Smith and uh, Oregon State, because even without him, uh, they've just kept winning. Uh, yeah, but he's a really good player. So talk mm -hmm. about what is uh, are, is he the guy that when you're looking at it, when you compare him to Meyer? Yeah. Well, what's the, what's the difference between Musgrave and Meyer that makes Meyer a little bit better than Musgrave on your list? Uh, you feel he's got more experience. I mean, Musgrave's going to come into the NFL with 15 career starts under his belt, and so you, there's just a lot of unknown. You don't have as much tape to look at and say, "Hey, he's proving that he can do this." And you want to see more than a season's worth of games before you throw someone into the NFL. Especially uh, at I that also, position. Right. And and Meyer's been a feature guy in that Notre Dame offense. Like They were manufacturing touches for him on all levels of the route tree, where Musgrave, he was more of an accessory to the offense. He was never a focal point. But what I like about him, athletically, he has more juice than Meyer, right? To quote Dan Schock, it's all to uh, wait for the 40 to come out. Because this kid, he's going to run in the low four fives. And he's got the NFL body. And I'll tell you what, the NFL lineage, he's the son of former NFL quarterback and offensive coordinator Bill Musgrave. That's and a big plus. It, it is. And it's a feather in the cap that a lot of kids don't have. I don't think that's ever a deal breaker. But I'll tell you what, when you're drafting you know, a young man to come in and be a professional, that's always a gamble. And that's often a make or break for a lot of these kids that come out of college. They don't work hard. They don't, they don't stay hungry. They feel like they've made it. Where you know a, a kid like Luke Musgrave, he's been around the lifestyle. He knows what it's like. He knows what it takes more so than a lot of these kids. And I do think there's a lot of decision makers and coaches in the NFL that they're going to be confident he knows what's going to yes. be expected of him. And throw in the talent, throw in the back uh, the fact that he is a high graded blocker, shows a lot of desire in that part of his game. And he's probably, when you're talking about height, weight, speed, he might have the best combination of traits in the class at the position. And for, for a league that is just capitalizing on quality tight ends, some teams do it so much better than others. If you can get this kind of athlete in the system and he's got some drop issues that he's got to fix, um, his drop rate's a little too high, but just, again, doesn't have a ton of targets to his name. Um, he has the potential to be – the, the high potential to be the number one tight end in this class. If he had not hurt his knee this year, I think there is a, a close to 50% shot. He could have been right up there with Meyer, if not ahead of him. So he is though a little bit more riskier than Meyer. Yes. There's this more unknown with him. Yeah. Now he's got a knee issue. Higher he dropped upside, an issue. So yes, there is definitely a higher ceiling here, but probably a lower floor.